Well, you can tell there's some serious weather out west when we open with the Donner Party. That was a group of pioneers in the year 1846 trying to get into California, and due to poor navigation, they took a shortcut between Reno and Sacramento. Unfortunately, that winter brought severe snows to the Sierra Nevadas. The party could not cross the pass into the Sacramento Basin. They were forced to camp near what is currently Truckee, California, and there just wasn't enough food on hand. Here's a map showing that part of the Sierra Nevadas. There's Lake Tahoe, here's Reno, and Sacramento way over here in the San Joaquin and Sacramento Valleys. The party came from central Nevada, came this way and got stuck right around Truckee and there's this last ridge that they could not get past. So right there is where they camped. It's thought that back then, California was hit by a series of atmospheric rivers. Here's the one that we have for today, and I think it was a very similar setup with a very deep low off of Oregon, Northwest California, and the flow just bringing in moisture. Now, there were multiple events, kind of like what we saw this year, but I think each of these events was pretty similar. And you can see this flow coming up into Central California, the IVT, Integrated Water Vapor Transport, running about to up to seven or 800 right there in the Central California area. So this is a moderate strength system. And here we're running the models from yesterday. And take a look at how this precipitation kind of gets stuck on Central California. See those snows there in the mountains? And then kind of wraps around as we get additional pressure falls out to the northwest. And we're already up to Thursday. And those snows just keep coming down. And finally, they clear out around Friday. So this is multiple days of heavy snows in the Sierra Nevadas. And that's what can contribute to these very heavy snowfall totals in the mountains. And there's the snowfall forecast from the Sacramento National Weather Service office. And we're seeing a lot of totals of about six feet all the way from Yosemite up through Truckee where the Donner Party was stuck, and up towards, I guess, the Marysville area, and lesser amounts up north, about one to three feet in the higher elevations. Here's how things looked about 30 hours ago. You're going to see this system come together off the northwest California coast, California right there, and Nevada right there. So what you're going to see is the low pressure system approaching the coast, and as we get that strong deepening offshore that backs the winds around kind of to the south along the California coast and that just brings in the moisture inland by the boatload straight to the Sierra Nevadas. Here's our surface chart for this afternoon. Right there is our powerful west coast storm and I've analyzed that as an occluded front in the north part of California and Nevada. I've put the triple point somewhere in the Hawthorne Lovelock area of Nevada and trailing down into the Bakersfield area just north of Los Angeles, the cold front, not making much southward progress at this time. The warm front was a little hard to place, but I went ahead and put that out in the Mojave Desert. However, the main story is not the fronts, but the strong upper level lift. We can visualize that on the heights and vorticity chart. The main jet this morning was around San Francisco up to northern Nevada. And you can see one little shot of strong lift working its way towards the northeast. Then as today goes on, kind of in between systems here, and then you can see some more energy coming together along the west coast. And that'll move inland overnight little slug of energy heading up into the Sierra Nevadas. And then here's a stronger one rounding the base of the trough. That's going to be approaching Los Angeles, San Luis Obispo, Santa Barbara, late tomorrow, Thursday. So that's it right there. And with that, you can see that the jet has shifted down to the south. So based on our 
rule of thumb, trough here, ridge here, and the jet kind of like that. That puts our fronts somewhat like this. So Bear Clinic system across the Mojave Desert region, cold front into Los Angeles and warm front up to the north. It may not be exactly like that, but that's going to be a ballpark of what we would look for on the surface chart. Kind of a negative tilt trough off the west coast, and then that will gradually move inland during the day on Friday. Cold core low over the San Joaquin Valley moving into the Mojave Desert region. The lift moving out into Arizona, so things will go downhill in Arizona on Friday. And then late Friday night into Saturday, it'll shift rapidly into the high plains, Texas, Colorado, Kansas, and New Mexico. Of course, there are other areas we need to cover. So we'll look at the central U.S. Got a strong 1040 millibar high there, centered on Winnipeg. And that's driving a lot of cold air that's just kind of oozing southward. January is when that happens. You don't need a whole lot of high pressure up to the north to have a constant flux of cold air southward. And as a result, we've got temperatures in the 40s and 50s in Texas. In the southeastern U.S., a bear clinic system in eastern Tennessee with a cold front moving through Alabama and we've still got some cold air damming in the Carolinas. So a little bit cool there and some clouds hanging in in that region. The last feature that I'm seeing is a lee side trough in Montana and Wyoming and it's kind of oriented like that instead of like this probably due to the strongly backed upper level flow. Then taking a look up in Canada. Not much going on, but I think there is some Arctic air starting to establish itself over the Yukon. See, now we're getting those really frigid temperatures, minus 30, almost down to minus 40. And it's probably going to continue building as that polar vortex starts reestablishing itself in northern Canada. Not much sign of that out here just yet, but we'll keep an eye on that over the next few days. Well, let's see if there's any Arctic air on the horizon. We'll look at the extended GFS panels going out to about 240 hours. Now, remember in yesterday's webcast, we talked about the polar vortex, how it was going to shift from Siberia into Canada around the first couple days of February. So we run this forward, and we can already see pressures building up in the Arctic Ocean north of Alaska. 1050s starting to come into view here, and that's indicative of some strong cold air. And as we run this forward into February 3rd, February 4th. Now we're starting to see the pressures really come up in Yukon and Alaska. The thicknesses are really not down all that much. I think one reason for that is because we're looking at kind of a shallow profile on that Arctic air. But those pressures really come up, coming up there 1050. And this is only 200 hours out. So this is starting to get within the range of accuracy for the GFS. So I think we are indeed going to be generating some Arctic air up in Western Canada around the first week of February transitioning into the second. And that does have great potential to come south into the U.S. unless we're in a deep southwesterly flow. But I think it's really too early to call that. We'll just keep an eye on it and we'll probably have a better handle on it next week. Let's take a look at a few selected satellite loops. Here's California. You can see the atmospheric river flowing up towards Sacramento and Stockton, impacting mostly the central San Joaquin Valley. Up to the north, things are dominated by convection due to the cold core conditions in that area. And further south, we get more into the stratiform precipitation. Southern California looking pretty good, but wow, some amazing gravity waves extending all the way into southwestern Utah. So very likely some bumpy conditions there. This whole atmospheric river, the frontal lift, the frontal system is going to be gradually moving southward 
over the next 24 to 36 hours. And this will be in the Los Angeles area tomorrow. They're going to be expecting about possibly three inches of rain in the valleys and in the mountains above three to 5,000 feet, possibly multiple feet of snow. So Ron Chalfant, who is one of our viewers out in this region right here, he'll probably be reporting on that for us, at least in the comments. Now that skies have cleared in Arizona, we're treated to the winter landscapes. We can see that some of the snow has even extended down to old Mexico. And certainly a lot of it, especially on the ridges in southeastern Arizona and right on up to the Mogollon Rim. And it looks like also snows around Santa Fe and on up into Alamosa and central Colorado. Here's a sector we don't often look at. This is Mexico. What's been happening is a lot of that cold air has been spilling south with that recent frontal system that moved through the Gulf Coast area. And that's producing onshore flow and a lot of upslope stratocumulus and stratus up against the higher terrain. This is the higher mountains up to about five to 7,000 feet. And that's very similar to what you see on the windward side of California. And what you see here, this is the lee side. So that's what you would find in Nevada, for example. So certainly some dynamic weather in that region. There's our frontal system in the southeastern U.S., cold front extending all the way down towards New Orleans. And there's a lot of the warm air advection lift ahead of the front. And we haven't focused on the northeast very much, but uh, this is a classic northwesterly flow pattern. Cold air advection coming in from Canada, a lot of stratocumulus, cold, somewhat humid conditions, and gusty winds. And you can see that some of the cloudiness is a little bit more dense over the higher terrain of Pennsylvania, where there's more lift acting on the air mass, and it kind of tails off on the leeward side where we have subsidence. And that tends to erode the cloud layers a little bit. And then just a very quick check of Colorado and Wyoming. Some snow on the ground, quite a bit of it there, and some very impressive mountain wave clouds. That would be very cool to see from the ground. Likely if that holds on until sunset, there would be some spectacular photography with those clouds. And then just a quick look at that Aleutian low we were looking at. 963, the pressure has really come up. So that system is done, but we can take a look at the model runs for yesterday. The zero Z run had it at 947, filling. Let me go back to 18 Z yesterday. 942, yeah, I guess it probably bottomed out at 942. I mean, the GFS, that's probably as good a guess as we can get. And at Shemya, they're offline for some reason. We lost the station yesterday about 24 hours ago. Last observation, 26th at 20Z. They had winds increasing, 45 knots gusting to 60 with snow coming down and the pressure continuing to fall. And that's the last report we have. I'm pretty sure they're okay. It sounds like maybe the communications got knocked out. All right, let's take a look at our short-term forecast. There's our convection and precip associated with the atmospheric river in central California. So what you're gonna see is that due to some pressure falls off the west coast, we get a little bit of backing, a little bit of slowdown on the progress southward. But finally, overnight into tomorrow, you can see it moving in on Santa Barbara late in the day, and then Los Angeles into the evening hours. And meanwhile, the Sierra Nevada is still getting hit. The atmospheric river just not done with them. However, the system does get picked up by the prevailing westerlies and starts moving eastward on Friday. You can see things shutting down in California. And then another system in Arizona, not as strong as the previous one, but the main dynamics are going to be concentrated in the southern part of the state once again. 
That looks to be about where the fronts are late Friday. So it looks like things are kind of taking a track like that. And then it's heading for Texas, but we're not expecting very much out of that since conditions are dry in that part of the country. However, we still get a 993 millibar low there in northwestern Oklahoma. Pacific front looking like that. Warm front kind of like that. So a little bit of a warm sector in East Texas, but the cold air will be coming around the backside during the day on Saturday, and it will be kind of gusty in Dallas, Amarillo, and Oklahoma City. Some showers and maybe some weak thunderstorms in the Midwest. Moving up there Saturday and Sunday, looks like snow in Chicago, Indianapolis, and Columbus. And that'll move eastward, and we're going to cover the impacts on the eastern U.S. for tomorrow's video. And for the weekend, just cold air coming south, and then we start a new week of weather fun. Yep, California, not quite as severe as the last one, but it looks like they're getting hit once again. And then, of course, we got to contend with the possibility of Arctic air. And you can see it's really building up the pressures there next week. So impacts on the western half of the country, and we will just have to see. The models are really not that great with handling the Arctic air past one week, so we're not going to worry about this too much. Okay, and that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed the forecast. I want to thank our new Patreon subscriber, Robert Vermillion. Welcome. And in closing, I want to encourage you all to go out and look at some weather charts and try to learn from them kind of the same way we've gone over the charts over the past week and try looking for some of those details with the California storm. That's a great way to improve your skills and doubtless you'll come across questions and things that don't make sense. But as you watch these videos, you're going to find that things just kind of gradually come together. So give it a shot there. Okay, hope you all have a great Wednesday evening and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.